And they may think that they won, but I know they're feeling the heat. They're, they're actually, we've got them in the frying pan right now. This is true. And I know, I, I'm going to tell you why. Now, I, I can't believe this actually happened, and I wasn't sure if I was going to share it here at CPAC. I wonder if the fake news will even cover this. Something happened to me this week before I left for CPAC, and it shows how desperate these people are to stop me and to silence you. I decided to share this. It's a little bit controversial, but I'm going to put this out. Somebody showed up at my door this week. They called me before and said, I got to talk to you in person. This can't be done over the phone, which is always kind of like, uh-oh, what's that going to be about? They came to my door and they tried to bribe me out of getting out of politics. <laughs> this really happened. I I'm telling you this because this is how disgusting politics is. A mom who runs for office and they're afraid of me, they tried to bribe me with a job title, with a huge salary, a position on a board. This is how they do it. And I said, are you kidding me? I walked away from a big job and a big salary. I'm not motivated by that stuff, guys. I'm not. So this person standing before me was sent at the request of some powerful people back east. They want me out of politics. But wait a minute. I thought they already stopped us. Why are they so afraid? I thought they already stopped our movement. So, so. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just on God's time right now. And when I said no to this person, they didn't take no for an answer. They said, well, what will it take? What is your price? How do we keep you out? Name your price. This really happened this week. Name your price. All we're asking for you to do is to get out of politics for two years. OK. CPAC, I got to ask you, do you think I should sit out for two years? Should we put our movement on ice for two years? No. I didn't think so. Or should we double down and stay in this? No. Double down. Now, I'm going to be honest. At that very moment, I, I wanted to sick my dog on him. But I have a pug, and it wasn't going to happen. So I said, you let your handlers back east know that I can't name a price because there is no price that I would sell out my country for. Not a million dollars, not ten million dollars, not a hundred million dollars. I love you right back. But I'll tell you, this tells me that they do not want my name on a ballot again. And I have a message. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. And so that got me very fired up. I was packing for CPAC, and this happened, and I'm like, I'm so fired up. And then after this weekend at CPAC, CPAC has a way of firing up us again, right? So what's going on? What is, I'm assuming this is our friend. Oh, this is, this is, this is back east. They, there are very powerful people that want to keep you out. I know oh, they do. But they're willing to put their money where their mouth is in a big way. So, this conversation never happened. Th this is crazy though. They should want me. I'm a great candidate. People love me. These people are corrupt. Well, maybe you're right. They are right. They are corrupt. Maybe. This is a wrap. Don't, don't go. Do me favor, though. I don't get myself in trouble. This, if you, if you, if you say no, that's just fine. It's your choice. Don't tell people. I They're going to have try to have me murdered. <laughs> I don't doubt that either. Saints world, man. If that stuff that came out last week is right about the cartel stuff, man. I hear the car, they say the cartel's operating in 50 states right now. Like all 50. You mm -hmm. know? So. So what, what, what's going on? Who is it? What? Forget the who. Let me just tell you the what. Let's just say there are people calling around saying, gosh, no, they can't repeat this. Never repeat this. If you say no, don't, because they say, I got offered to buy out. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't, don't. 
because then we lose our ability to get things done other, in the future. Here's this, my problem. Rather than just say, let's work with her, she's a great candidate, because they don't own me, and it pisses me off. Yeah, it's not it's about ownership. It's about control. I don't know if it's about control. It's about being on the team. I guess that's it. You know what I mean? They want to be on the team. They want you to be on their team. But just team. You know? But if they're pushing a globalist agenda, I can't do that. So what do they want? What do they want me to do? They want you to stay opportunities. <laughs> but, let me tell you what I can offer you. But, um, I said you can do whatever you want. The talking head, this and that. So, the, the ask of me was, it's kind of funny. So the, the ask I got today from back east was, this is, is there any companies out there or something that could just put her on the payroll and give her to keep her out? And I said, well, what are you willing to do? Like, whatever we need to do. This is about defeating Trump. And I think that's a bad, bad thing for our country. DeSantis is not America first. This is about the final death blow to Trump. And I don't think that's good for our country. I, mean, you know, I love Trump. I, mean, I love Trump. It's not good for our country, Jeff. It's not, but at the same time, I'm not even sure Trump can win again. I don't know that he can win again. I think what it really comes down to for a lot of people, it's not only really about like control or agenda, it's just about the ability to raise money to win. You know? If you really want to know, all of politics, politics boils down to money, I think. Mm -hmm. I that. And even on their end, like what makes them the most money? I know. These, all these consultants don't want their, their payday to end. And I don't want to make a deal with these kind of people. This is a hill worth dying on. I, I'm not, if they're going to steal the election to make me and our, our movement go away, I'm not letting them do that. I owe it to the people of Arizona or to carry their torch and their voice. Or you don't go away, but you pause. This is the battle is right now, Jeff. And we fill your coffers. No, the battle is right now. The battle is right now, and um, we don't have time to, to pause on this battlefield. You're not. You, what you can't scratch their back. It's not for you. Yeah. You don't have anything to offer them, and they're sitting around people that have something to offer them. You know what I mean? It's just it's. It, it's a it's a back scratching club. That's all DC is. It's a big mm -hmm. back scratching club. You're in no you're in no position to scratch anybody's back, and you've already made it known that if you get there, you're not going to scratch anybody's back. I don't scratch people's back. You know, I was I've been on the outs for a lot of people for a long time. I don't scratch my backs. Mm -hmm. You know, where are we in two years if they steal the election again? Listen to what you're saying. Why don't we do something about it what so that we the people can pick our what can we do? I'm not willing to accept that. And I'm going to be the biggest fucking pain in these people's ass. And go back and tell them that. Mm -hmm. I'm running, and I'm going to be the biggest pain in their fucking ass. I, and I'm willing to tell them that. And they're going to have to fucking kill me. To stop me. No, I know, I know, look. And, and you don't have to tell them that, but no. I don't think they will, but... No, I don't think that's the way they are. Uh, Either they come around and try to work with me, or I'm just going to... That would entail not telling, layman's telling me, you gotta distance yourself from Trump. I know, you distance yourself well, from DeSantis. He's, he's, he's all about her about that. But the what I'm saying is, don't tell people that. I'm with Trump, okay? I wanna work for I the betterment Trump. of Arizona. I'm, I'm not gonna let these people back in DC tell me not to run. It's not telling me not to run. I'm not gonna pause for two years. The battle is now. But I'm offended by whoever these people are that they're trying to well, buy me be, out of. Well, you should be honored. But I'm offended that there's people back there who just don't give a shit about our country. Do you understand, though? You should be honored. That, that <laughs> means they know how powerful you are. Well, I can tell them if that. If you were powerful, they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to have this conversation. Yeah. Right? You should be Very few people get this. I know. I'm, just, I'm pissed that they don't care more about our country. It's all about the mighty dollar to them. And that's offensive. I don't know. I honestly don't know. They want to get Trump so bad. They want him out that's so bad. Trump. This isn't about Trump, it's about you. It's not about Trump. You're really I'm good. It's about you. 
Trump. Some people that are in on this, I don't know. Listen, I can win. Why don't you go back and tell them that I can win, and why don't they get behind me? I just see, I see these things through a different lens. It's very personal to you. This was you. This was your name on the ballot. And I get that. And it's a very personal thing. Well, I have a, um appointment coming up, and I have to work on my book. Yeah. I, I'm not going to... I appreciate their concern. Just to say, is there a number at which... I can be bought? Not be bought. <laughs> what it's about. You can take a pause for a couple of years. No. And then go right back to what you're doing. <laughs> no. 10 million, 20 million, 30, no, no, no. A billion, no. This is not about money. This is about our country. I think it's disturbing that they would even, that anybody would think this is. I, I, no, to be fair, even me, even me, I'll say this. I want a fresh face right now for the reason that I've never seen anyone. I can't think of a single person in a federal race who lost, ran in and won. I can't think of it. If you can think of it, let me know. I am not going to let these people who hate our fucking country tell me not to run. You should call them and tell them to get behind me. I, mean, I, I, I can win and they words. should get behind me. I would, I would happily say those words. Yeah. Do you think my words will carry any weight? Okay, well, did you think you would come in here and that I would be bought? <laughs> it's not being bought. Yes, it is. It's, I think. What it I is think. being bought. No. They, they are trying to buy me out of running. What and I it's, think. it's actually, I mean, all right, I'm flattered. It's, I'm offended. I'm offended think, for our country. We have people this, like this who live here. What I think is this, is it can give you an incredible opportunity to have a bigger voice to fight for stuff than you currently do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't want to deal with people like this. These people are un-American, and I, I think they're unethical, and I would be absolutely immoral if I did that. Again. That's immoral. I couldn't, I couldn't, look, at my, I, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror if I, you know. It's just, it's very powerful people that are willing to, they really want someone different they want new names whatever it is so they want jim layman that's a new name no actually that's not even that, that's a possibility but they're even asking me like i i know they they've got all these new names and i'm going to beat each and every one of them sorry jeff take it back take it back to them oh i gotta i gotta get working i, know I love you but i gotta get working all right i appreciate it, it i mean i'm just i can't believe this <laughs> hey hey again be honored instead of them just look Instead of just them working to beat you, they're trying to, like... They're... They, they, this is about getting Trump out. Nah, yeah, it is. Trump well, it's about DeSantis, getting DeSantis in. Getting DeSantis is, is getting Trump it's not. out. You're, you're reading too deep into it. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe my case will go through. Maybe they'll do the right thing. I do too. That's my first goal. Yeah. But they can't have me in the governor's office because then we're going to root out some of this corruption. But again, it's like you know what it is? The people don't get to choose their elected officials unless they're pre-approved by the swamp. And the swamp doesn't pre-approve of me. You need a strong party to help. I you think win. you should go public with this and then no. say, "Hey, no, 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 no. These people don't want to. They don't want. They're... And then I turn my key in my car and I just. <laughs> I don't know. I like my car. <laughs> Tell them I'm not flattered. <laughs> I'm offended that they... Don't tell anybody that we had this conversation. I'm offended that they um, don't care about our country more. I actually wish you'd just give me a counter offer this big. <laughs> give me a counter. <laughs> I can't. I can't be bought. Come on. I can't. All right, I'll see. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.
And they may think that they won, but I know they're feeling the heat. They're, they're actually, we've got them in the frying pan right now. This is. <laughs> we were going live on, on Twitter. We're, so. we're going live on. Waiting for this to start up, and I'm I'm really honored that you guys would give me a little bit of your night. Um, we're like here we are midweek. And I'm glad that your social life is as, is as exciting as mine, that we are all here and, and we care deeply about our country. We're trying to save our country right now. And so I'm glad that you're joining us. We decided to put this on Twitter as well. We didn't even let anybody know, but we're really happy about that. So, hey, what's going on? Nothing happening in the world, right? We just got back in Arizona, the amazing state, the most amazing, beautiful, and sadly corrupt state, in my opinion, in the country. Uh, we were in... New Hampshire, helping to uh, do a little stumping for President Trump, because we got to turn this country around, guys. We have got to bring our country back and bring our government back to we the people. And so on our way back, we decided, literally on our way back on the plane, we said, we're getting inundated with people who are asking questions. They're asking questions. Oh, my microphone might not be there. They're asking questions about um, what's going on to um, w with this whole uh recording that has been put out there in the media and the media has been reaching out saying we, we want to in, do interviews and I said there's only one of me there's only so many hours in the day and I can't do all the interviews so we decided to do a rumble live and now twitter live and we want your questions so ask us your questions we are going to start with the first question are you getting one. any questions it's so I have one there, there's so much there's so much coming. I've got Colton over here helping me up. Okay, I've got a. I said Sadie, Colton. Sadie I said Crow. Colton. No one's going to join us. Um, the, the media wants to talk to us. He said, "No, we're going to go live to the people." And he was right. He said, "We're going to take that filter out from the media. The the media always uh, will put their own filter in." I just did an interview with the fake news. So, okay, I have one that says, "Carrie, who to it moves so fast? Who told Jeff Dewitt to bribe you? Who told?" Jeff DeWitt to bribe me. I don't know. I wish I did know. As a matter of fact, I've thought about it many a day since then, and I've, I've laid awake at night wondering who it could have been, what group, what person. But isn't it sad that you could literally, for 24 hours, think about it, wonder, guess, and that our government is so corrupt. Washington, D.C., the people back east, as he said, is so corrupt that you could literally probably come up with a list of about four or 500 people and groups that are uh, behind this. And, and, and that's the sad thing. And this is why I am getting into politics. I'm in politics. This is why President Trump is in politics, because we want to make sure that we root out that kind of corruption. We can't have that kind of corruption happening in Washington, D.C. And frankly, it starts in Washington, T in, in D.C., and it moves down into capitals across the country, into the state houses, into the municipalities. And uh, what happens is people run for office, and immediately they get bribed, they get blackmailed, and they become controllable. And this is what's wrong with our country. Got another question? I got another one. Was this the first time that something like this has happened to you? Oh, boy. I don't even want to answer this because when I got into politics, it became so corrupt. I mean, I worked in media. The media is... Um, really corrupt right now. They're pushing propaganda. This is why I walked out of my job. I walked out of a seven-figure contract because I said, I don't want to be part of, of a corrupt cabal. I don't want to be part of pushing propaganda. And uh, actually, I've never told this story. I don't, I don't even know if I should tell it. Should I tell that story? Um, after we won the primary in the governor's race, there was a, an individual who'd been supportive of us, and we were really happy about it. And we asked him to be, become more involved in our campaign. We were really happy to have his support. He, had, he was a, a man who had been quite successful, and he wanted to start a PAC for us. He wanted to give some money to a PAC. For those of you who don't know, because I'm kind of new to politics as well, PACs will spend money running commercials for you and ads that will help propel your message or maybe expose what's going on with your opponents. And this individual was willing to put a million dollars into a PAC. 
And I said, that's wonderful. Thank you. We're, we're really happy. This is a grassroots campaign. If somebody has a means and they want to put, they want to put money into uh, helping us get elected so we can save Arizona, we love it. And about a, 24 hours later, I got a, a, an email from this person who uh, put his asks. He put his asks in. He said, well, you know, if I'm going to do that, I have some asks that I demand of you. And these asks were really outrageous. They were basically, <clears throat> you know, you can't be around MAGA type people. You can't support President Trump. You can't uh, support other MAGA c- candidates And listen, I wanted to get the whole slate elected, and I wanted to bring our movement over to everybody who was running on the Republican ticket. I wanted everybody who was Republican to win. And so I said, I can't agree to those asks. And we literally um, said, thanks, but no thanks. And somebody who had been in politics for a while and who was on our campaign said to me, I've never seen anybody in the history of my time in politics who said no to a million dollars because they didn't want to do a few simple things. But I didn't think it was simple to say I'm willing to turn my back on President Trump. I'm willing to turn my back on other Republican candidates. I'm not willing to take somebody's money with a whole bunch of strings attached. So um, that was one example. There's been probably others that I can't think of right now. But when President Trump calls <clears throat> Washington, D.C. the swamp, it he truly means it. It is swampy, it's disgusting, and it's corrupt. And I want to, well, we just had a little, something dropped in my office here, and we want to change that. I've got some, a lot of people are asking, are you worried for your safety? Um, I have been worried about our safety, but you know, this is what, this comes with the territory right now. We're in a, we're in an era right now where the world is very dangerous. When we were on the campaign trail for the governor's office, I laughed because my, my team would say, are you kidding? You have another slashed tire. We'd go in and we'd have a, a, a meeting of four or 500 people, Arizonans who were happy to see us and would join into us. And we would basically, uh, come back out. And we would get in the car and we'd start driving down the freeway and our tire would be flat. Our tire would go would go flat immediately. We'd get the warning. We had that happen so many times. So I've recently gotten emails um, telling me that they want to take me out, neutralize me. I've had threatening phone calls. But it comes with the territory. We're not living in normal times. We're living in dangerous times. And when people threaten you, they're trying to stop you. And why are they trying to stop you? Because you are effective because you are making a difference. And as I said in that video, and I hope that many of you had a chance to see it, they will have to kill me to stop me. I am a mother. And I, if you're a mom out there, you know, raise your hand, you know, let me know you're out there. If you're a father out there, we've all seen those videos where we see dads and moms over the past where you see them like lifting a car, cars rolled over a child. And literally you see like two dads and a mom or, or three dads lifting a car, like they have superhuman strength. And that is that energy and that, that certain thing that we have inside of us when we become parents that we have to save and protect our children. And I have that inside of me right now. And I am willing to do anything and everything to save this country because saving this country, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. I'm being selfish. I want to save it for my children, but I also want to save it for yours and my future grandchildren. This is a, this isn't a question, but this was interesting. It said, <clears throat> say hello they, to Colton, everybody, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> they said, this tells me, If they're willing to bribe you out, they don't think they can cheat this next round. Mm. I've said that before. You know, they, they, um, they used, expended a lot of ammunition in 2020. We discovered a lot of the ways that they cheated in 2020. They did a lot in 2022. And why do you think they're trying to stop President Trump? Why are they trying to indict him in four different, you know, municipalities are trying to, they're trying to indict him. They're trying to stop me. They're trying to sue me. They're trying to actually stop me with a defamation case, which is really a censorship case because they can't stop us at the ballot box. You know, they tried to convince everybody that Joe Biden won 81 million votes. Please don't insult our intelligence. What are they going to do this time when president Trump wins by that many votes? Are they going to try to convince us that this geriatric patient who's leading us into war who's caused an invasion at our border? Are they going to try to tell us he won 100 million votes? 
we're not going to fall for it. And so I do believe that they are having a hard time coming up with new ways. That's why uh, Jeff DeWitt showed up at my door and said, we want you to sit out. Please sit out. Just sit out for two years. We don't want you on the ballot because they can't stop this movement. This movement of us, we the people, and frankly, I don't care what party you're in, Democrat party, Republican, Independent party, pool party, pizza party, brunch party. I don't care what party you're in. It is about our country. It is about saving our country and protecting our children. And they can't stop us and they know it. And so that's why they're trying to bribe me out of politics, sue Donald Trump, keep us so busy in court that we can't campaign. But I don't think people are going to fall for it. People are putting money into the Rumble chat. There's a lot of money coming in. Someone said, what can we do to help? Everyone else should encourage, encouraging everyone else to put money in. I didn't know this was Money. That's okay. Cool. That's great. You well, you can, you can actually, I just see that my team put carrylake.com. That's where you can find out more about our campaign. You know, all of you who followed me during the uh, governor's race, you know that we had great policy. The, you know, the media tried to call us extremists and, and, uh, far right extremists. That was my favorite thing. And I said, well, so far I have been right. And I am extremely worried about the future of our state and our country. And I know many, many of you are as well. And that's why we're in this. That's why President Trump has great America first policies. They could be called common sense policies, but it's about time we put our country first. When are we going to start putting American families, individuals, and our safety, our security, our national security, our energy policy, and our children first. And that's what we're going to do when we get to Washington, D.C. So you can go to carrylake.com. You can support me there. Uh, you know, I'm up against a behemoth, which is the Soros machine and the Democrat machine. And they somehow always seem to outraise us. I mean, who knows where their money comes from? We can imagine all day, but it's it's probably from sketchy sources, just like uh, Hunter Biden selling his, as I said, finger paints for a half a million dollars. So we need to uh, get moms and dads and individuals out there, even in this difficult economy, a $5 donation, a $1 donation, a uh, $1,000 donation, whatever you can afford is appreciated because we have to win this Senate seat. Why am I in this? Because we have an opportunity to take back a Senate seat. If we can get the, the majority in the Senate, then we can make sure that when, when President Trump wins, that his policies that are going to secure our border right here in Arizona will be enacted. Somebody said, why are you in, in New Hampshire? I said, because getting President Trump in the White House is so important for my home state, Arizona. It's so critical that we actually get President Trump in the White House because we want to have that border secured. And I think all of us know, even if you're a Democrat and you support Joe Biden, you know he's never going to secure the border. He's the reason the border is wide open. All right, we're all right, getting cool. a lot of why did it take 10 months for this to come to light? Why did it take Oh, 10 months I love for that this question. You guys all, you already know the answer because you, you saw the bribery audio. I, I, I'm hoping that if you were, you were here since the beginning, you, you heard that. And then you saw what happened about 24 hours later. As you heard in that audio at my home that was recorded at my home, you heard that uh, I said, I'm very busy. I'm, I'm packing. I'm finishing up my book called Unafraid, by the way. You can find that on Amazon or anywhere you get a book. Actually, only places that sell books written by conservatives. And I, I said, I have to go. I don't have a lot of time. I was getting ready and packing to go to CPAC. I was uh, one of the keynote speakers, and I was really honored to have that, that honor to be a keynote there. And um, he said, as you heard in the audio, don't tell anybody this happened. Don't talk about this. If you say no, don't mention it, which is really suspicious. But I thought about it on the flight to D.C., and I thought, you know what? I have to mention this. So I changed my entire speech when I got to CPAC and I mentioned it. I, I did a whole speech on this. I did a whole speech about how corrupt the government is, how I had just in the last 24 hours been bribed, almost as if it was a movie. It didn't even seem real. And I did the whole speech. And since then, in several important speeches I've delivered and, and even talks with just small groups, I have mentioned that I was bribed by an individual to stay out of politics. They can't have us in politics. We, they can't have we the people in politics because we're too dangerous to the corrupt system. So I've been talking about this for 11 months. Sadly, the mainstream media hasn't bothered to ask me any questions about it. Can you imagine that? 
If somebody on the liberal side had been talking about being, uh, you know, being blackmailed, they would have been asking questions, but they didn't ask a single question about it. So the video came out, or rather I should say the audio came out and, and the name came out and now they're all of a sudden interested in it. All right, this is a, Jordan Conradson texted me. He says, don't you think it's hilarious that the lefty journalists like Lori Roberts are attacking you over this rather than admitting he was wrong? Why do they attack you? What's your response? Oh boy, I haven't read her response. I'm shocked. <clears throat> okay, let me tell you who Lori Roberts is. She's a cat lady who lives in Arizona, who is in, uh, she writes op-eds for the Arizona Repugnant, as everybody calls it. I think their subscription base is about like 5,000 people in a state of 7 million. And um, this is the interesting thing, and this is how corrupt this this paper or this journalistic entity, propaganda entity is. She is sisters with, uh, she's a sister to one of the members of our Arizona Supreme Court. She's admitted that she speaks to her sister and talks every single day to her Supreme Court justice sister. And she writes between two and seven or eight hit pieces on me a week. So you know the conversations are probably stemming from what she talks to her sister about. And it's really unethical. The, the corruption is so deep. It goes from the, uh, as you saw, from the political parties, from the uh, journalists, propagandists, to the courts. She writes seven or eight hit pieces on me a week, talks to her Supreme, Arizona Supreme Court justice sister every single day. I'm sure I've, been, I've come up in the conversation. And her sister is actively um, hearing cases that I'm involved in, that not just me, that you in Arizona are involved in, that deal with our elections. So it's completely unethical. Um, you know, she's an angry woman. I'd love to sit down and talk to her, but I don't think she has the courage to do that. I've got... And, and how, how can you blame me? I, I, my, my question for her is how can you blame me? He showed up at my home. And he threw this at me. How do you blame me for that? What do you think of Jeff DeWitt's resignation letter? What do I think of Jeff DeWitt's resignation letter? Well, it came very late. Uh, I didn't see an apology to the people of Arizona. Uh, he tried to act like the behavior you heard on that audio is normal communication amongst friends. It's disgusting. And I think he did a horrible job, and he should have just apologized, resigned, and apologized and said he's going to work to, um, to do better. What can we do to keep this sort of... What can we do to keep this sort of thing out of politics? <clears throat> what can we do to keep... I don't know if you can hear Colton. What can we do to keep this sort of thing out of politics? Um, we can start to elect America First candidates. I, I really believe that the America First movement is about rooting out corruption. It's about rooting out corruption. And we see that with President Trump. But here's the deal. The America First candidates are the ones who are strong enough to withstand all of the hatred. You know, he mentioned that, that cat lady who writes for the Arizona Republic. I'm willing to take seven hit pieces from her every week. I'm willing to take hundreds of hit pieces, even though I've lived a great life and I've been kind to everybody and I, I treat everybody with fairness and dignity. I'm willing to take those because you know what happens? On, on your deathbed someday, it doesn't matter what they wrote about you. You're going to have your loved ones looking into your eyes. And I, I hope to God that we're not living in a communist America at that time. But if we are, they're going to look into your eyes and they're going to say, what did you do to try to save America? Did you do anything to prevent this? Well, I'm, in, I'm hoping that my kids look into my eyes and say, Mom, thank you so much for doing everything you could to save America, to protect our God-given rights and our freedoms. And I don't want to have that other, that other option, which is that we've lost America. So we've got 10 months to get together, work hard, and save America. And I want to I want to reach out to people who maybe aren't somebody who voted Republicans. Maybe you voted Democrat or Independent before, and you're thinking, wow, I don't like the direction this is going. Maybe you heard that audio recording and said, that's disgusting. I don't like that at all. I want you to just look deep in your heart and say, is your life better than it was four years ago? 
Is your children's future more secure than it was four years ago? And get behind this great America First movement. We have an opportunity to turn this whole nightmare around. We know that the Democrats are no longer Democrats. They are radicals. And their policies are destructive. They're dead-end policies. And in some ways, they're deadly policies, especially when you look at what's happening on the border. And we have a, a, a chance to turn this around with great common sense policies. And that's what I want to uh, make sure we get into place here in Arizona. I've had a good one, Carrie. This says, my name is Amy. I live in Vermont. I'm sorry this happened to you. I just donated okay. $20, <laughs> and my church group would like to pray for you. What are your prayer requests? Oh, my gosh. Amy from Vermont. I get that... Um, I get that question asked a lot. Would you believe that? So many people say, I have a prayer group. We are going to do prayers for you. And I feel those prayers. I know President Trump feels them as well. I know many people are praying for him. Pray for our movement. Pray for our country. And pray that we have to. And I know this is hard because sometimes I don't want to pray for the people I don't like. We have to start praying for the people who are opposing bringing our country back. We have to pray for, I, I don't even want to call them enemies because I don't think I have any enemies, but we have to pray for the people who are pushing back against saving our country, the people who we look at with maybe disdain and pray that they, that they find God because this is really a good versus evil battle that we're in. It's truly a, a good versus evil. And I know that we're weary and tired. I'm exhausted. We've been up since God knows when. We just flew back on a very long five and a half hour flight. Uh, we're all tired. We're going to get up tomorrow and do it again and just pray every day that God uses you and gives the skills that you, he gave you that you can use those to help save our country. I would love it if you'd pray for my family and our safety. That would mean a lot to me. Pray for our country and that we are successful in saving this great, great republic. This is someone from Arizona. They live in Mesa. And now that he's gone, I'm concerned about the future of the Republican <clears throat> Party. What do we do next? Well, th that's going to be, uh, you know, I'll be honest, the corruption I saw in, in this individual, I don't think there's anybody who would be worse, to be honest. I, I, you know, you could get the, you know, a church mouse who might be a more ethical creature. And so um, I, I think actually Saturday I'm, I've been made aware is a big meeting and all of the Republican uh, leaders from around the state are going to meet and, and hopefully they will find somebody who is ethical and who is willing to lead the great Republican Party in Arizona, a pivotal state, by the way, in order for President Trump to win, America First policies, policies to be enacted in, in order for me to win, we're going to need to have a strong Arizona Republican Party. So I hope and I pray, this is, by the way, the prayer warrior in Vermont, please pray for this, that when these amazing Republicans descend on Phoenix on Saturday, they come together and find a great, ethical, honest leader who's strong and smart and hardworking and can lead us through the next 10 months as we as we take our state back and our, our uh, country back. This one says, Carrie, who can we trust? This opens a lot of questions as to who is real and who isn't. Who are some politicians oh, boy. that you do trust? Oh, boy. I, I, I say this all the time. I trust the people. The media is hitting the most. I trust the people the media is relentlessly attacking. When you see the fake news media attacking somebody nonstop, put everything you've got behind them, pray for them, get involved, get involved with their campaign. Of course, I, I trust President Trump. And I hope and pray that the Arizona Republicans will elect a good leader for our Arizona Republican Party and that we can then start putting our resources and energy and even donating to the AZ GOP because we need a strong AZ GOP going into this next year. So let's see what happens on Saturday and uh, find these America First leaders that you see running. You will know. We need to start listening to our intuition. And they call it women's intuition, Colton. It's that little kind of feeling you get in your gut. And I got that feeling a few days ago when I said, I want to, I want to look back at that recording. What was in that recording? I never, ever looked at it. It's been 11 months and I'd never watched it back. And a few days ago, out of the blue, I just started watching it. And I was so horrified by what I heard. It was so much worse than what I remembered it being when I was in the middle of that conversation with Jeff DeWitt. That recording, when I heard it, 
as I said, my daughter was listening in. She was gasping. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is the worst. This is really one of the worst things I've ever heard. It's so, it's so corrupt. I'm getting some questions <clears throat> about being employed with Jeff DeWitt. Can you talk about that? <clears throat> Isn't that funny? The, and, and the fake news media was like, oh, were you employed? I was an employee of Superfeed and I've always mention that. That's part of my uh, financial disclosures that you have to put out when you run for governor and Senate. Um, he was not my boss. He was an employee, a co-worker, just like me. And um, I've, I, I've actually, that's been out. That's not a new story at all. So I, it's funny that he's trying to act like he owned the company because that's not the truth. Do you think that cinema will run? That's a fun one. Ooh, do I think cinema will run? That's a good question. What do you guys think out there? Um, you know, she's got to get about 60,000 signatures to get on the ballot. And in order to do that, she has to have those by the first part of April. So time is kind of ticking right now. She's got to be able to have the time to do that. I don't know if she will. I mean, I think with, with each passing day, I think it's less likely, but I'm going to be really honest. I am out. I'm running. I'm in this, not because I love politics. It, as you know, and as you now know, it's really disgusting. It's really disgusting. Um, but I'm in it because I want to save our country. And so whether she runs or she doesn't run, if it's just a two-way race or a three-way race, I'm ready. I don't care who they throw at me. They can throw every single person they want at me. I believe that the people of Arizona trust me. They know that I'm going to go to Washington, D.C. I'm going to tip over the apple cart. We're going to set it on fire and we're going to actually bring out a new non-corrupt apple cart. And we're going to actually start bringing policies that help <clears throat> the American family, the American border, American national security, American energy independence, American children, and actually strengthen our country. And I believe with everything I've got, all my heart, that we are going to have our greatest days ahead. President Trump's going to work his tail off, and so am I, to make this country better. And we're going to make America great again, as he says. All right, I've got the last one. That one, one. Last question? Yes. Okay. This one, you got it. This one says, we feel lost and we don't know what to do. Oh. What can we do to help the movement and what can we do to help America? Oh my gosh. I just want to look. I wish I could look into your faces right now. <clears throat> we are not lost. We are coming back. Our best days are ahead of us. The fact that you're sitting here watching this in the middle of the week shows that you're involved. You're engaged. You care just like I do. I mean, I never in a million years, five years ago, would have, would have seen myself, envisioned myself in politics in the middle of a political movement. But here we are. And everywhere I go around the country, I go to liberal cities, liberal states, conservative cities and conservative states, and people everywhere come up and say, thank you for fighting. Thanks for talking about election integrity, for fighting for it. Thank you for being involved. This next 10 months is going to rely on every single one of us to use our God-given rights and you might, or God-given abilities, I should say, to save our God-given rights. Your abilities might be, you might say, well, what abilities do I have when it comes to politics? Maybe it's just picking up a phone and you like to talk to people and calling people, getting involved in a phone bank. Maybe it's answering emails for a campaign. Maybe it's protesting some of this ridiculous stuff you're seeing uh, that the left is pushing. And by protesting, I mean not buying products that are pushing this agenda on our children. Or maybe protesting means literally holding a sign up and saying you're not for something. We all have to get involved. Get involved with your local Republican club, whether it's Republican Women's Club, whether it's the uh, state party. And I'm hoping that after Saturday, we're going to have a very strong Arizona state party. Get involved with campaigns. We have to be involved the next 10 years. And most importantly, use your voice. The most important and the strongest and most potent weapon we have is our voice. So we got to use our voice and make sure that we are speaking out about the candidates we like. Don't worry about the, what the media says. Speak out and support President Trump and myself and everybody else who's an America First candidate. Are we good? Okay, guys, uh, I'm so glad that you joined me. Um, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm sure you are. It's been a very long few days. We just came from the East Coast. And I appreciate you for being here. I wanted to answer questions of everybody in the media who had asked me. 
But frankly, uh, there's not enough hours in the day. We had hundreds of media requests, and I'm going to try to get to some individual people in the media in the next couple of days. But I appreciate you joining me here. This whole reason that we are in this movement, this whole reason that we were born at this time is to be here for this moment. I believe that with all my heart. Just as our founding fathers were here 247, 250 years ago, for that moment, God placed them there and he placed us here. We are here at this moment for a reason. God put us here and we're not, this is not an accident. We're here for a reason. I'm honored to be here in this fight with you. It's me and you and all of us together. And as Americans, I do see a day when we come together. I want to be working together with Americans to make sure that we are fighting so much to save this country. And so let's do it. You, you see the carrylake.com. If you can go there, you can learn where I stand on the issues. If you can make a donation, if it's $1, if it's $10, if it's $100 or $1,000, it's appreciated. Anything you can do, we have to support those candidates who are standing up against corruption and for the people. We've got 10 months to save our country. I'm going to do everything I can, every single thing I can to do whatever I can to save this country. And I, I do believe we do it. I've had people come out, come out to me and they say, we've already lost it. No, we haven't. We've not lost it. We've got 10 months to save it. Raise your hand. I don't care if you're at home alone. Raise your hand if you're in this with me because I can't do it alone. President Trump is a friend. He's one of the strongest people I know. He can't do it alone. We got to support him. We got to support me. We got, I'm supporting you. We're all in this together. And we got to fight back against the corruption, and it is deep. So thank you for being here, and let's do this again. I appreciate the thousands of you who showed up. I love you all, and uh, we're going we're gonna to take back this beautiful country. Thank you so much.